Hey, welcome to Vortex Garage, and today we're going to take you along with us as we do an oil change in this 2024 Honda CRV with the hybrid drivetrain. Now, this is actually the first oil change for this vehicle. It's got just over 1,500 miles. Now, nothing's popped up on the maintenance minder yet, but just in general, I prefer to do an earlier oil change as part of that break-in. Now, we are going to be following the Honda service steps today. But I do want to disclaim this video a little bit. This is really for entertainment purposes, just to kind of bring you along as we do it. It's not meant to be a how-to. If you're not familiar with doing something like this, this is your nice new car. You should take it somewhere and have it done. If anything, for those people in that situation, this video can help tell you what a quality mechanic would do versus a quick lube shop, some of the extra steps that are by the book for Honda, and more reason, again, to take it to your dealer and let them maintain your vehicle. Now that's important because today we're probably going to cover some things and skip over a lot of other things. Like for instance, we're not going to cover how to lift the vehicle safely. Obviously we're using our two post lift, but what if you're using ramps? What if you're using jacks and jack stands? There's all kinds of safety stuff that you have to take in mind, not to mention all the things that you have to be careful with when you're changing the oil on a new vehicle. So just to let you know, that's what this video is. Now this 2024 CRV does have the, the hybrid drivetrain. It is the two liter engine, not the 1.5 turbo that we featured in our 2018 CRV. So although it looks like the service steps are somewhat similar, there are a few differences. Number one, being a hybrid drivetrain, you're gonna have to get this thing up to temperature to help the oil flow. It's something recommended by Honda and good practice for any oil change. Now you could go for a nice drive and make sure that the engine has run quite a bit and you'll be good. Alternatively, you can enter maintenance mode and go ahead and take care of that. I'll show you, I did a quick video on my phone on how to enter maintenance mode. All right, so we're gonna go to maintenance mode first. We're gonna put our parking brake on. Then we'll turn on the car without a foot on the pedal. So no feet on the brake. One, two. All right, and then we're gonna do two full depressions. One, two. Then we're going to shift in the neutral. One, two. And then we're going to shift back up to park. I'm going to do two more of those presses. One, two. And brake and power on. And there we are in maintenance mode. So now I can actually rev the engine while in park. So this will allow you to warm the engine up a little bit if you're doing an oil change. Now to exit the maintenance mode, I'm just going to put my foot on the brake, turn it off. and then we'll restart the vehicle. Okay, and then we'll turn off our parking brake. Dismiss our warnings. And we're out of maintenance mode. So now you've got your hybrid engine warm, you're set to go ahead and do it. Like I said, it looks like the steps are pretty similar. One of the big differences between the old CRV that we had, looks like our oil capacity on this with a filter change is gonna be 4.2 quarts. We're gonna be using uh, synthetic 0W20, and we're also gonna be using a non-Honda filter. We're gonna be using this. This is a Wix XP, 57356 XP. And these are good quality filters that you can use, and uh, that's what we're gonna use in this system. So um, probably enough with the talk, and I think we've kind of covered everything. We're gonna go ahead and get this thing up and pull the underbody panel off and continue. Of course, first step, we're gonna go ahead and open our oil cap. Okay, so just to make sure our oil flows out a little easier, we are going to go ahead and open up our oil cap with our 0W20 logo on it. Okay, 
So our first step, just like the other Hondas, we're gonna go ahead and remove the bottom plate. And it looks pretty similar to the old designs. Uh, we've got a couple of Phillips head screws, and then we've got a couple of 90 degree turn pins. Let's go ahead and remove the screws first. Looks like on this one, there's two up front and two in the back. It matters. I'm using a PH3 screwdriver. Seems to be working good. These might be your uh, JIC screws, but uh, the uh, PH3 that I got fits nice. And number four. Okay, we're going to leave that one in just a little bit. And we're going to take out these. So it looks like there's 90 degree, one. Two, three, four. Well, this is the kind of camera shot that goes right up my nose. So it looks like there's only four of these now. So they've actually lessened that. I know these are a big complaint people have. Well, they added one more Phillips screw and got rid of one of those. And it looks like it's just a little bit easier. You can't get it off of the flathead. Come on now. And then I like to use my head to lift it up. And uh, then just we'll slide it down and out. And then all the rocks from our gravel road will come out. So we got four Phillips head and four 90 degree turn uh, heads. All right, looks like here's our oil drain plug and our filter. Pretty simple. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and move our drain pan over. This all looks pretty standard Honda. Looks like probably a 17 millimeter. Yep. That will pop that loose. Let's get our drain pan up. Now, I'll keep it down a little bit. I don't want to block your view. Okay, I'm going to lower this. I'm going to live dangerously. Try to give you an extra view. <laughs> and uh, All right, let's see if I can pull this without making a huge mess. Or blocking your view. Perfect. That was our crush washer, by the way, if you're wondering what that was. Now on the Honda filters, I found this particular filter wrench design works really good. It fits on the, the uh, it fits on the filters and, and grips them really well and takes them off pretty easily. Yep, nice and simple. So as I drain this, and I'm going to move this kind of down here so we can hopefully capture this while we're draining there. Let's find out. Oh, they make it like this. One. You should get one of those things on the top here. Let that drain out. So as that's draining out, I do have to talk about a bit of a controversy while that's draining. And uh, well, essentially, if, if you're bored and you're looking for something to do, uh, some recommendations on things that you could really fill your time up with, would be going to a uh, forum, uh, Facebook or anywhere and question a religion or ask about a religion. Another thing you could do is join an HOA. That would be an, a good way to kill some time. Or you could enter an online debate about whether or not you should fill or not fill your oil filter on an oil change. And uh, well, I have to say, anytime I've ever posted an oil change video, I always get a lot of comments, some of them very, very, um, very into their particular train of thought on that. And here's what I'm going to say about filling versus not filling your oil filter. Here are my thoughts on all that. If you're doing your oil changes and you're doing them hopefully even earlier than the manufacturer recommends, then good for you. You are doing more for your engine than most people. If you fill your oil filter, congrats. If you don't fill your oil filter, but you're still doing the maintenance, congrats. And there's quite a simple reason for that. So number one, the Honda service manual the actual official books that the Honda dealers use do not reference filling 
the oil filter when you put them on. They simply don't do it. There are also some manufacturers, CAT being one of the major ones that people reference, who actually say don't fill the filter before you put it on because they're worried that most people are going to fill the filter through the center hole and that there could be contaminants that come in from the bottle of oil, perhaps even some foil from the little end there. So they would just prefer that you don't do that and allow the filter to catch anything that might come through the oil container. Other manufacturers recommend it. I think Cummins and, and the diesel side does. But with auto manufacturers, it's kind of hit or miss. Some filters are mounted straight up and down so you can do it easily. Some of them, like Subarus and some Toyotas, they mount down from the top. You simply can't fill them even if you wanted to. So I really go back to the fact that you're not going to destroy your engine by not filling it. The vehicles nowadays have uh, pressure bypass valves. Plus, you've just drained the oil out of the engine. There is still a film of oil on everything, just like you had turned it off and it was sitting. This isn't a freshly built motor. It wasn't sitting for six months. And the final thing is, is that the little filter on these cars and the power of the oil pumps, they fill up so fast, it's not funny. It's not like a gigantic diesel filter. So I have, for many years, never bothered to fill filters, especially when they're small. Sometimes with large ones or a fresh engine, definitely. Um, even and then I'll do a, a prime the engine kind of deal. So today you're not going to see me fill the filter and that's why. And again, you choose how you like to do it. But at the end of the day, I always recommend follow the service procedures. If the manufacturer recommends doing something, do what the manufacturer recommends. It's the safest way to make sure you do it right. So consult with Honda, do what Honda says. All right, let's go ahead and pull this down the rest of the way now that it's drained some. So I will put up on the screen a few things that Honda does recommend is that you check your original filter. Here's the original Honda filter. You want to make sure that this came off with the filter and isn't stuck up on the filter housing on the engine. On the new one, we're going to want to check this and add a little bit of oil. We're going to want to check the threads. So we'll show you that in a second. So guys, we check the filter location and there's nothing left behind. That is now ready for our new filter. And then we still have our drain plug out, letting our oil fully drain out. I like to cheat and just get some of the oil that's coming out nice, fresh and clean, just to lubricate the O-ring. So here's what we're doing on our Wix filter, just to show you. We are coming in, going to lubricate the O-ring with a little bit of engine oil, and we're going to inspect the threads, make sure that the filter's in good shape. And of course, we did right on the back of it. There you go. We put our date. We're in the U.S., and we do things day, month, day, and then year. So a little bit out of order, but it is March 16th, 2024. Okay, we're going to go ahead and install our filter. Big thing here is just make sure it threads on nice and smooth. It should see, spin on nice and easy like that. We're going to spin it down till it stops. Now here's a real interesting one for you. Honda actually specifies in their service manual a tightening specification for the oil filter. They specify a three-quarter turn from clockwise from or clockwise from where it seats, or nine foot-pounds, which is also equivalent to I think. Yep, 12 newton meters or nine foot pounds. Since we have this here, we can do our three quarter turn. So there's a half turn. Oh, that's a quarter turn. There's a half turn. And that's about three quarter turn. So we've got our filter tight enough. Now on the original Honda filters, now on the original Honda filters, they actually have these little arrows. And these arrows, you can actually follow them. See, there's four, three, two, and one. And there are guides in the service manual for how to tighten these specifically based on watching those arrows. But pretty standard oil filter. We've got ours installed tight enough. 
with a lubed gasket. Next things you're going to want is your new crush gasket. Is your new Honda crush gasket. I've always heard people kind of question too, like how should you put the crush gasket onto here? As you can look at these, there's a flatter face and a rounder face. Well, the material is single material. So as far as I'm concerned, they're gonna crush either way. But I typically put the flat face against the drain and then the rounded face against the oil pan, in case you were wondering. So we've got our brand new crush gasket. We have our new drain plug. And we're gonna go ahead and thread that on a little bit. We're going to clean up. Okay, we're going to tighten this by hand. Again, if that's not threading in by hand, we got a problem. It's a brand new vehicle. It should thread in by hand, and it certainly does. All right, then we're going to take our trusty torque wrench. We're going to set this to 30, pound, 30 foot pounds. And then we're going to come in, tighten. And as you're doing this, as we've noted before, you will feel the crush gasket give before you get to your torque value. That's it. That's our 30 pound feet. If you're a real stickler, you can mark this. And then one thing, let me move this out of the way. One thing I've done on these, just to serve as a reminder, 30 foot pounds, in case I forget. All right, so just to recap, we've got our oil drained. We have a new filter installed with a lubricated O-ring, tightened to three quarters turn past the seating. We also have our drain plug reinstalled with a fresh Honda Crush gasket, torqued to 30 pound feet. Now we can go ahead and reinstall our underbody protection, our underbody shield. This isn't really protection but it certainly does help keep things clean. All right, so to install this, we're just gonna start here and here. Then we'll line up the bolt hole. Okay, I should probably zoom out for you. Apologize for that, but I think you understand what we're doing. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and get these started. and then the two up front. Again, taking our time to align it. There does not appear to be any difference with these bolts, by the way. All four of them are the same. Before we tighten those down, and believe it or not, they actually have a torque spec. We'll throw it up on the screen when we do the video, but uh, I usually just tighten them by hand. One. Two. It's nice that there's only four of these. This is gonna go faster. One of my biggest gripes is when you see a car and something like this has been pulled off and it's been done not by the owner on their choice, but by a quick lube shop or whatever. They've just decided that they don't want to mess with them anymore and they throw them in the garbage without even asking the uh, owner. Many times I've seen that and said, hey, what happened to your under panel? Oh, I don't know. Someone decided for you to get rid of it, huh? And again, living on a gravel back road, this thing is keeping dirt off of the bottom of the engine. I'd just assume keep it. Plus it helps with aerodynamics. And I do believe that these things help some in directing airflow to specific places on the vehicle. I always prefer to have them. Make sure we're tight. And uh, we're pretty much done underneath. So honestly, even though this is a hybrid, a little different than the 1.5 turbo, 
Oil chain steps have certainly not been that much more difficult. In fact, pretty easy. In fact, I almost say they were a little easier because there were less of those little clips. All right, so we're now ready to go ahead and refill our oil. I'm gonna put a nice clean funnel in. We got our oil. We're gonna be using some Pennzoil Ultra Platinum 0W20. Not a sponsor, but I've been using this a lot lately and been happy with it. Add an oil change, including the filter. Honda specifies 4.2 uh, quarts or 4.0 liters of oil. So we've got a five quart jug here. And here's what I like to use. You've seen this in some of our other videos. This is a paint mixing cup that I use specifically for uh, the oils on the CRVs. In fact, we've done three CRVs with this one. We've now marked the 2024 CRV as 4.2 quarts. And we have on our fill line our 0.2 mark. There it is. It's about, about 6.4 ounces. Yep. So 0.2 US quarts is 6.4 ounces. So we're gonna do four quarts plus 6.4 ounces. And to do that, what I like to do is take this, open it up, keep the lid on it to keep it clean. Give our oil a little shake. Make sure this is our zero W20, it is. We're gonna do four full fills to our 32 ounce for our quart. And you just gotta not lose count. All right, there's one. Here's two. Here's three. Number four. And then we're going to do our 6.4 ounces. Just about, there's no way this is going to show on the camera because it's going to be, it's going to be jiggling and I don't have it straight, but you always check it on a straight, uh, straight plane. We are there and here is our 0.2. And we'll leave that in there to drain out. So that's pretty much it. Once we're done, we're gonna put our filter everything away. We're gonna put the cap back on and then we'll go ahead and check the vehicle, make sure that the oil's good. This is just like a normal engine. We're gonna check it with the dipstick after it runs for a little bit. You can use the maintenance mode to get it to start and run, but it may actually start and run on its own when you turn the vehicle on. Take this, filter in it, move this aside, reinstall our cap. And uh, let's see. Take my phone. All right, then we'll just reset our maintenance minder, which will probably be a separate video, or I'll do it on the phone here. I'll have to figure that one out, but I'm sure it's done uh, through our buttons here and our screen, or maybe in this. But we'll uh, reset our oil life. Okay, power down, we'll let it sit a little bit and then we'll check our oil. That's good. Wipe that off. Our oil level's right in the middle, perfect. We filled it to factory specs. All right, we're in the CRV. Let's go ahead and turn on our ignition. We're not going to start the vehicle, just hit it twice to turn it on. Okay, and then we're going to hit our home button until we make that all go. All right, and then our home button, we're going to want to run our dial until we get to maintenance. Click your dial. There's your oil life for A. We're gonna hold the button. Looks like for about 10 seconds. Okay, and there's our reset. We're gonna maintenance reset on A, defaults to cancel. Item seven, nope, we wanna do 
I went the wrong way, didn't I? All right, let's do item A. Reset completed. Oil life 100%. Then we'll hit home. Let me go back into that because I uh, made a bit of a goof. So let me go back in the maintenance. We did an oil and filter, that's B. So we want to hold our button again for the 10 seconds and we're going to go in and reset both A and B. We want to make sure that we're reflecting the fact that we did both an oil and a filter. Maintenance reset B, yes. There we go. All right, and that takes us back, oil life at 100%. And we can go ahead and scroll back to where we had this. It was on range and fuel. And there we go. All right, so that concludes our video. We've done our oil change on our Honda CRV. There's a few little add-on bits and pieces that we might have skipped, but we'll try to have separate videos for. If you've got a hybrid Honda CRV, these are some of the steps that would be taken if you get an oil change. At any rate, we hope you enjoyed this video, and if you like this kind of stuff, well, check us out. Leave us a like, comment, and subscribe. We've got plenty more here on Vortex Garage.